known since antiquity um, as it's the symbols for copper, such as the, um, the ankh, uh, the Chinese um, kanji symbol uh, for qi, and in medieval Europe, the, uh, the sign for Venus is also the sign for copper. So copper is synonymous with good health and has been known for many um, millennia. So copper has been used extensively in medicine since ancient Egyptian um, times. Hippocrates used it to treat leg ulcers, for example. Uh, it's been used in uh, the Aztecs, uh, suppressed cholera outbreaks in Paris. Uh, the thing I want to concentrate on, though, was this study published in 1983 by an American physician in Philadelphia, Phyllis Kuhn. And she noticed that in her hospital, they were starting to replace all the brass doorknobs and push plates with contemporary materials, stainless steel, plastics, chromium plating. She noticed when they did that the bacterial numbers on the surfaces increased and the infection rates appeared to increase. So she wrote a letter to an American journal and everyone ignored her. Now, is it coincidental that we've had an increase in hospital-acquired infections worldwide? Um, I wonder. So, we are very concerned about hospital-acquired infections in particular, nosocomial infections, but of course infections uh, in the uh, community are also on the increase. So we now recognize that hospitals can be dangerous places for hand contamination and cross-contamination. Now I want to ask you a question. If you knew that um, a jumbo jet full of passengers was going to crash each day and everyone would die, would you fly? Okay. The interesting fact, fact is, in America, that's the number of people who die from a hospital-acquired infection each day. So one in 20 contract an infection in, in a hospital in the USA. It's the same in Europe and the UK, by the way. And of those, one in 20 will die. That means there's a risk of uh, one in 400 from a death from going into a hospital, which is not very encouraging, is it? In the USA, it's the sixth leading cause of death behind heart disease, cancer, and strokes. And it costs economies a lot of money. 45 billion in America. WHO suggests $80 billion worldwide for hospital-acquired infections, many of which are antibiotic resistant, as David Cameron has reminded us all this week. So in the UK, it, the situation is similar. We get something like 300,000 patients a year who um, acquire a hospital-acquired infection. Over 5,000 of those die. 80% um, of those infections are spread by touch, and it costs us at least one billion pounds a year. Now, the problem, of course, is that microbes are everywhere. They're in the environment, they're within our bodies, and they're on our skin. Some of them friendly, others not so friendly. We lose about 2 million skills, uh, skin cells an hour, so we're shedding a lot of uh, bacteria. Um, we touch a lot of surfaces, we're quite tactile, so we'll touch about 30 objects um, a minute. And 80% of infectious diseases are transferred by touch. We touch, for example, uh, door handles and push plates in buildings yeah. such as hospitals. Uh, we also help move pathogens along by coughing and sneezing, and also for even using the toilet when we don't flush with the lid down. Simple things like this. Now, what that means in a hospital, when we actually do microbial counting around a patient's bed, you'll see that these are the numbers of culturable bacteria um, around a bed in an intensive care unit. Now, it's believed for good hygiene uh, measures that there should be less than 250 bacteria per 100 centimeters square. And you can see here, we're talking of thousands in that case. So it's a major problem. Another issue is the fact that we can't clean surfaces very well. This is polished stainless steel. It's been professionally cleaned. But under the microscope, you can see there's lots of um, gullies, scratch marks, what have you. And the bacteria can survive in there. So not so good. So, to try and answer the warning of Phyllis Kuhn, uh, there have been uh, worldwide studies now where they've replaced uh, touch surfaces in an intensive care unit with copperized surfaces. So bed rails, uh, even mice, over bed tables, visitors' chairs, computer keyboards, and what have you. As soon as you do that, this is what happens you find that the mean bio-burden of bacteria around a patient's bed decreases from over 6,000 bacteria to less than 400. So we've got more than a 90% reduction in bio-burden. Trials have been going on all over the world, and they're reporting greater than a 90% reduction in bacterial 
uh, buyer burden. And in the USA, three studies in, California, in uh, Charleston and New York have shown a 58% reduction in infection. So this is quite exciting. Now, why does copper look so good? Uh, just remind you some simple chemistry. Copper is in the same column of the uh, periodic table as silver and gold, but it's much more reactive than those because it's got a free electron in its outer shell, and this makes it very good for redox reactions. So we've been looking at a whole range of um, alloys of copper to understand their properties. We've looked at a whole range of different pathogens, such as waterborne bacteria, including uh, Legionella, foodborne bacteria, such as E. coli, IO 157, and Listeria, and particularly some of these so-called superbugs, the hospital-acquired pathogens. I can, oh, and these include not just bacteria, but also viruses, such as flu, norovirus, and adenovirus, and fungi, such as Candida, Aspergillus. Now, I can only just give you a flavor in just a couple of minutes, but when we put an organism such as MRSA onto a copper surface, these are the numbers of viable bacteria we can recover. We go from 10 million to zero in under one hour. If we put that, those bacteria onto stainless steel, they will survive for days or can be months. And for those of you in healthcare who think silver is antimicrobial, dry silver surfaces do not work. Silver only works in the wet, not the dry. Now we can do various things like look at metabolism. So for example here, we're looking at the respiration of MRSA. That's on stainless steel after three days. Respiring cells produce a red fluorophore, which we can see. You'll see that in 45 minutes, all of those cells are dead. We can also look, for example, not just at the respiration, but also the DNA concentration. So this is um, Enterococcus faecalis and faecium, vancomycin resistant, VREs. Um, on stainless steel, they look very good. You'll notice on copper, their respiration has been abolished and their DNA has been destroyed. And this has happened in just 10 minutes. We can also look at the cell membrane integrity. This tends to collapse very quickly for gram negatives, such as E. coli and the salmonella. Not quite so quickly for the gram positive bacteria. But we can see the DNA breakdown. So here we're looking at the uh, content of DNA in a cell. That's 100% pure copper. You'll see within even 20 or 30 seconds, they've lost their DNA. That's brass, which is 70% copper. Takes a little longer, but even two or th three minutes, they've lost their DNA. But on zero copper, they're quite healthy. We can even destroy sex. So here we've got one bacterium trying to mate with another. They have a, a, a sex pilus. The copper kills those two species of bacteria, destroys their DNA, so we get no transfer of antibiotic resistance. We can even demonstrate the production of reactive oxygen species on a copper surface. So here we're looking at Acinetobacter, and this green fluorophore shows the bacteria producing reactive oxygen species. The reason for that, just some simple chemistry, when a bacterium lands on a copper surface, it produces a small amount of hydrogen peroxide. This takes part in what is known as the Fenton reaction and generates hydroxyl free radical, which is highly reactive. So we have a two-fold attack mechanism. We have direct attack of copper one and copper two, and we have indirect attack of reactive oxygen species such as hydroxyl ion. Now I'm gonna whistle through and actually get onto the main thrust. Amber's fabrics. So this is one of the, the fabrics that looks like here. So that's uh, to the eye. Under the microscope, we can start to see ingre uh, increasing magnifications, the structure of that fabric. Um, this is a control. It does not contain copper, and it looks different under the microscope. But physically the same, but the colors look different. Now, when we actually look at culture recovery of MRSA, uh, a lot of data, but if you just look here, very rapid killing on the copper-containing fabric, similar to what we found on solid surfaces. And if we look on control surfaces, very good survival on those in the absence of copper. Under the microscope, um, we have a copper-containing fabric, and we have a control. Now, this is a control after 24 hours. There looks to be a few bacteria attaching on that surface. We've used a green fluorophore to show them. But on the control, there doesn't seem to be much going on at all. So you might conclude they don't attach to copper. But actually, if we reduce the magnification, now what you'll see is the fabric covered in a sea of bacteria, and many of which are cloudy and not attaching to these fibrils. And on the copper, 
fabric, we hardly see anything. And the reason is they've died on the copper surface and their DNA has been destroyed. Now let's see how good the video is. So we've, we've actually teased the fibers out from the copper fabric and I hope what you'll be able to see are two things. On this surface, you'll see bacteria accreting onto the surface here. And if you look up here, you'll see other bacteria coming down, almost like fingers, and attaching onto the surface. So they're being pulled onto the surface. Now, in this one, we're actually looking fluorescently. And this is almost like snow falling onto a surface. And I hope you can see the bacteria are being pulled onto the copper surface. So they've been attracted. And you can see that also here, where we, we have various of the fibers, and you'll see the bacteria accreting down onto the surface. The bacteria are negatively charged, copper is positively charged, so there's an elect electrical attraction. Now, this is a control, so this is in the absence of copper. So here's all the bacteria, which we've stained green, and they're on the outside. And you'll notice nothing is going onto the control fabric which does not contain copper. So they're not being attracted on the control. OK, so we can call this a fatal attraction. So it's almost like a moth being attracted to a flame. But rather than the flame doing the killing, it's almost like in the movie, where Glenn Close is attracted to you know, the uh, Hollywood star. She's attracted to him, but ultimately her passion destroys herself. So we can call this attraction followed by a metabolic suicide. <laughs> so finally, back to the future. Florence Nightingale, 150 years ago, reported how if you keep the environment of a hospital clean, then you can reduce the rates of cholera, typhus, and dysentery from 42% down to 2%. So good hygiene has always been important. Hippocrates and others have showed the use of copper dressings to control skin infections. So where are we at now? Over 400 copper alloys have been registered with the US government with an antimicrobial claim. They're now being deployed worldwide in public buildings, hospitals, and public transport. And of course, Amber's company are now coming out with copper fabrics for clothing and dressings. And this offers the future for prophylaxis and therapy.